Welcome to the Business Daily Podcast. I'm Justin Rowlatt, and today we're entering the world of workplace fashion. Now you've got to look. You've got to. You, you've got to look fantastic on the end of that catwalk. We'll be answering some pressing questions. For example, does dressing up go down well at work? I thought I'd be hip. I turned up at a business meeting very coolly and casual and I got a bunch of suits in front of me. Needless to say, I didn't get the contract. I've always done better to be overdressed than underdressed in business. And must dressing for work always be about how you look, not how you feel? You still want to dress with your client or your customer in mind. To me, the biggest mistake people make is dressing for their own comfort. That's all in the Business Daily podcast from the BBC. 150 years ago, the world dressed very differently. Yes, Englishmen did don what are now known as lounge suits, but almost everyone else wore their traditional national dress to formal meetings. Yet gradually, the lounge suit has stripped away all sartorial difference. It has become the standard uniform for business across the globe. So what is it about the suit that has allowed it to conquer the world? Professor David Shaw teaches at the European School of Economics in London. He's the author of several books on the fashion industry, including Mastering Fashion Marketing and the Fashion Handbook. The great thing about the lounge suit is it's a very functional garment. It can give you a psychological boost. It can make tall men look shorter, short men look taller. It probably does uh, more for a man's body than a plastic surgeon. And of course, it's a great level uh, in in business. Uh, It's nice if you start on a level playing field. So that's really it. Uh, new industries develop new styles of dress. You mm. think of kind of Silicon Valley yeah. and all those new yeah. media industries where, you know, it's actually a virtue not to wear a suit. You know, a suits are for yeah. squares. That's rather old-fashioned language. Yeah. But, you know, it, you know, there is a kind of reaction against the suit, isn't there? Yeah, I, I think when we see the 1960s, we see a move towards casualisation. And you're quite right, in more formal industries like the law, like uh, banking, people still wear the, the formal suit. But uh, Silicon Valley media, people like yourself, indeed, wear open neck shirts but even in those areas now with the current difficulty with the job market you're finding actually people are dressing slightly more smartly they're being a little more cautious and uh, when you look at the sort of best dressed man in britain today guess what he's back in a, a, a back in a suit so you think in times of trouble people retreat to formal dress why do they find formal dress reassuring what is well it? it's it's you know, the, the, when the soldiers came out of the the, the army uh, after the, the two world wars it was uh, like a uniform it, it, it's got solid it's got structure you know where you are with a suit you know how you're going to look if you're a bit fat you know it can hide things if you're a bit thin it can make you look bigger it's a wonderful human level and that's why it's carried across the world has anyone ever looked at how performance changes does what you wear determine how well you perform at work well on a personal basis and on my observation, I lecture a lot of young students trying to go into the business world. I, I tell them to probably best dress more smartly than casually. It is a psychological booster. People make a judgment about you within the first 40 seconds of when you walk into a room. And I think that's true for all cultures around the world, whether you're in Africa, India. People judge you. And of course, we're in the age of lookism, the age of brands. The global branded suit is now pretty evident as you travel around the world. So you think people judge you, and what do they what do they see when they see a man in a suit or a woman in a in a business suit? Yeah, well, more and more women are wearing business suits. Savile Row has many of the tailors producing for women. What do they see? They see somebody who's ordered, somebody who's smart, somebody who's together, somebody who's reliable. That's that's what it comes across as. Don't they also see a conformist, somebody who wants to fit into the kind uh, of prevailing attitudes of no, formal dress? No, no. What, the clever thing is what what you wear with your suit. It's the tie. It's the shirt it's the haircut they say you can tell a man by his haircut his watch and his shoes it's the extra things about you that that make you quirky and you know some of the famous designers like paul smith he always has a twist in his suit classic with a twist that's his answer i heard an interesting interview with somebody who runs quite a laid-back company and they they sort of dress down as a as a rule and he had a dress up friday and found that when all his employees came in in suits he found them much more decisive and efficient i was rather worried that he was making a mistake letting them dress down during the week well it's it's interesting people do have you know across the world people dress up for for funerals for weddings for official occasions for business it's psychological if you course you work better if you're dressed better you feel more confident there's nothing worse and it once happened to me i thought i'd be hip i turned up at a business meeting very coolly and casual and i got a bunch of suits in front of me needless to say i didn't get the contract i've always done better to be overdressed than underdressed in business so when in doubt dress up
and perhaps have a flamboyant tie to show your yeah, true that, that, personality. That tie, yeah. let, let your tie speak for you. That was Professor David Shaw of the European School of Economics in London. The advice that, when in doubt, it is better to dress up, not down, is certainly true in Kenya, where smart invariably means the full Western-style combination of a suit, a crisp shirt, a tie and a pair of well-polished shoes. So why do Kenyans, like most other Africans, eschew the more comfortable and just as smart and expensive traditional African attire? According to these office workers in Nairobi, the conventions are just too hard to break. Well, I think dressing speaks volumes of oneself. You dress shabby, you look shabby. And that's how clients will take you. But if you dress good, they take you seriously. I think I'll be a bit traditional. It has to look official. And official means to me a tie and a suit. That is what I want my staff. Um, when they meet people, I want them to be in a tie and in a shirt. African attire is good. That's why we've given a Friday for people to wear um, casually African and whatever way, so long as they are, you know. But, but if you had your way, they'll still wear a tie and suit on Friday, right? Um, seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of office workers from the Music Copyright Society of Kenya in Nairobi. Derek Babanga knows about the importance of appearances. He's an entrepreneur and the co-owner of the Nairobi-based image consultancy Public Image Africa. He told our reporter Kevin Machiro that when it comes to dressing for work, comfort should not be an important consideration. America has given us a lot of a lot of things. I think one of the things they should take back is dressing business casual. I would like to see even more people, including Fridays and even Saturdays, people dressing up. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about perhaps dressing up in a full suit, but certainly dressing to impress, even when it is a casual Friday or working on a Saturday, says so much about you. I mean, at this point of the time of the year here in Kenya, it's, it's blistering hot. Yes. It's, it's our Kenyan summer. Yes. And look at me, for instance, yes. today, you know, I'm <laughs> casually, very casually dressed. And shouldn't there be an exception to that, yes. especially times like this where we could, should be able to adorn African attire that, is, that has a lot more room to breathe, has a lot more color, and, and is a lot more expressive? You've used a key word there, Kevin, and that's dressing appropriately. Dressing appropriately for the appropriate occasion. Regardless of the weather conditions, and yes, this is a tropical climate and we're in the middle of some pretty warm weather here in Kenya, you still want to dress with your client or your customer in mind. To me, the biggest mistake people make is dressing for their own comfort. Yes, wearing a suit or dressing in a tie might be considered a little unwieldy, certainly in this summer weather, but there's different materials that you can use. You don't necessarily have to dress in a, in a thick wool suit. There's options like linen. There's different types of cotton. So there are ways that you can still look professional, even in warm weather, but still come across as professional. Now, as far as African wear, which is what you mentioned, I have no problem with African wear. I think African wear is absolutely fine. But again, when do you wear that African wear? There's an appropriate occasion for that. If there's an, a, a, a function, for example, in the evening, a cocktail party. That might be the time to, to wear something like that. Derek Babanga talking to the BBC's Kevin Mochiro in Nairobi. You're listening to Business Daily from the BBC with me, 